I recently tried Framer to see how its workflow compares to using Webflow. I've been hearing over and over again about how Framer is a great tool to use if you are a designer, and I've even been told that I'm outright dumb for wanting to stick with Webflow, which I thought was kind of harsh, but you know, people are entitled to their opinion, so that's fine. In any case, uh, I actually enjoyed learning Webflow, even though it has a steep learning curve. I found that learning the development aspect of it was just helpful when it came to learning how to design a web page. But in any case, there is a big drawback when it comes to using Webflow that can be immensely frustrating. And so in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what that drawback is, uh, as well as just how my experience has been with learning Framer. So let's talk about Webflow first. And I'll be honest, Webflow was not an easy tool to learn. And the main reason for that is because I initially went into it thinking that it was going to function kind of similarly to a design tool like Figma. Uh, but that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, it's more of a visual development tool. So all of the elements that you drag from the left side of the panel are the HTML elements and everything on the right side of the panel are all of the CSS attributes that you can adjust. And so the thing that makes it difficult is you can't just drag things freeform on the canvas like you do with Figma. So Webflow functions more like a Google document versus a freeform canvas. So anything that you drag onto the Webflow document is going to kind of be stacked, blocked on top of each other unless you organize it uh, with the CSS attribute that you want. So that alone makes it more difficult to use than something, than a design tool like Figma. I learned Webflow both through free methods using the Webflow University, which has top-notch courses on how to get started with Webflow. And I also used a paid course from the Flux Academy Webflow Masterclass, which I thought was a, a very good complement to the Webflow University. And so through those courses, I got a lot of practice with building web pages. And at this point, I feel fairly proficient with using Webflow. Certainly not an expert by any means, but I feel like profi proficient enough to use it and proficient enough to try my hand at, at completely redesigning my portfolio. So my portfolio is currently housed on UXfolio, which is a UX portfolio builder that is kind of similar to Squarespace. So it has a very drag and drop interface. The only thing is that it lacks a lot of customization. So a lot of portfolios that use UXfolio look very similarly because there's just not a lot of customization to it. So I wanted something where I did have more flexibility to design things the way that I wanted to have them uh, look. And so I decided to try Webflow to design, uh, redesign my portfolio. And this is sort of where the big drawback comes when, uh, when it pertains to using Webflow. I was running into some technical issues when it came to redesigning my portfolio in Webflow. I would have issues where images wouldn't be displayed in a way that I was expecting, getting a functional slider, in a way that I was envisioning was sometimes difficult to do. And working with design systems and Webflow is not always the easiest. However, I think that their most recent update has made this easier. But in any case, with all of these issues, I found that the bottleneck of my progress with Webflow wasn't necessarily my design skill, but rather my development skill, because the issues that I were running into were more development based as opposed to just my sheer ability as a designer. And so that can be a frustrating problem. And that's really what led me to try Framer. So I started learning Framer a couple weeks ago and the difference is pretty wild compared to Webflow. So I took the, I think it's called the Framer Fundamentals course. It's taught by Ryan Howard, who also has a course on Flux Academy, but I, this course alone was probably enough for most designers. It gives you a look at all the tools or maybe most of the tools available within Framer. So I got a chance to dig into how do I design using Framer, how do I use animations and make things responsive, that kind of a thing. And the main thing that's stuck out to me and probably has stood out to a lot of designers is the fact that this is 
fundamentally much more of a design tool than Webflow is. The, the layout of it is very similar to Figma. If you know how to use Figma, honestly, you probably don't even need a whole course on Framer. If you know how to use Figma, you can probably just take that knowledge and just start playing around with Framer and you'll get a pretty good idea on how to use it. So with Framer, because it functions more like a design tool and not so much like a visual development tool like Webflow, I can drag elements onto the canvas in a freeform way. And with that, I can just sort of mock up designs in Framer, which is something that I can't do in Webflow because of the way it's structured. Uh, now for me, I would probably still choose to mock up my designs in Figma just because there are extensions or, or plugins rather that I use with Figma that make my workflow easier. But the option to mock up your designs in Framer certainly exists. And I imagine there's probably quite a few designers that use it like that. Animations are also more intuitive in Framer than in Webflow. In fact, I have found that animations are probably one of the hardest things to figure out in Webflow. It, it's still, even though I know how to use animations in Webflow, it's still just not an inherently intuitive thing. Whereas in Framer, it is very intuitive and it is very easy to get the animation you want in a, a very easy and short amount of time. In fact, I would say that in terms of landing page, design, I would say that you could probably do everything in Framer that you can do in Webflow, but do it a lot faster. Going back to what I was talking about before about bottlenecks to improvement, really the, the bottleneck to improvement for Framer is really just your ability as a designer, your ability to create usable and beautiful designs. Whereas for Webflow, it is the bottleneck for improvement for Webflow oftentimes is your development chops. So being able to structure things using HTML and CSS. So if you're someone that wants to work solely on just getting better at design and not having to worry about a lot of those development constraints, then Framer is a really good choice to go with. At this point, in order to become better at using Framer, I am redesigning a web page that I found using a remix link that I found on one of the support documents of Framer. As far as I understand, a remix link is just a copy of a Framer file so you can see how it was made and you can edit it to, to kind of make it your own. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the Framer document, the remix link, and I'm basically trying to recreate it from scratch on a separate uh, Framer document. So this way I can get a lot of practice with how to just lay out a web page using Framer. Um, I find that this is a really much more applicable way to learn something as opposed to just like watching a bunch of tutorials. Now I haven't really used Framer enough to really think about what the drawbacks to it are, but from what I understand, I think that the CMS in Framer is not quite as robust as Webflow. So if you are looking to create websites that do have a more robust and involved CMS application, then Webflow is, I think, going to be a better option for you. Again, this is more what I've heard from others as opposed to what uh, I've tried personally. While I am enjoying my journey with learning Framer, I will say that I absolutely do not regret learning Webflow. And in fact, I probably will still work on Webflow to become better at that. And the main reason that I do like Webflow is I enjoy learning about the underlying structure of how a web page is laid out. I actually kind of like the whole HTML and CSS and kind of seeing how the two work together because it gives me an idea on how to create more usable designs and gives me more of a better uh, conceptual idea on how to create more responsive ideas. It's just now with what I have learned from Webflow, I can sort of use that HTML and CSS knowledge and I can Use, I can apply that to Framer's easier user interface so that I can still create those usable designs that I learned from Webflow, but in a much faster way with using Framer. Now there is one big drawback to using Framer that I don't think is mentioned often enough and is something to really consider if you are planning on doing freelance work. So with Framer, 
they function kind of similarly to Apple in the sense that they want to lock you into their ecosystem. And the main way that they make this apparent is that supposedly you cannot export the code of your website with Framer. So let's say you build a website for a client and you send them the Framer file they can't change host at that point. Like they can't migrate that site over to some other platform. They're stuck with Framer. And so this may not be an issue for some clients, but for some clients that do want that flexibility, Framer does not have that flexibility. And so this is actually where the big win for Webflow comes into play because you can export the code of your website uh, with Webflow. And so if your client does want to transfer their site to another ecosystem, they can do that with a Webflow code export. If you're a designer wondering whether to go all in on Framer or Webflow, I think it really just comes down to your goals. So if you are wanting to focus solely on design work and be able to create functioning web pages without having to worry about sort of development constraints, then I would go with Framer. But if you are, if you have a thirst for knowledge and you do want to learn the underlying HTML and CSS and, and how web pages actually operate, then I would say go with Webflow. That definitely was the more appealing option to me. And I think you do learn a lot um, when you do sort of have that uh, basic HTML and CSS knowledge. At the end of the day, uh, I think it's just important though to just pick something. So try Webflow for instance, for a week or two and just see how it goes. You're not tied down to any one platform. So if you find out that Webflow is not for you, then you can just switch to Framer. I know for me, I often can fall victim to analysis paralysis and I'll spend days and weeks just like analyzing the pros and cons of deciding between two different paths when really if I just dove into something and tried it out, I would learn a lot more that way as opposed to just watching a bunch of videos about each of the different platforms. So just dive into something and then course correct as you go along. I think that's sort of a, a better option to go with. If you found this video to be useful in any way, it would mean a lot if you hit the subscribe button. It helps me out it tremendously and it just lets me know that these videos are resonating with you. Uh, if you are interested in how I was trying to use Webflow to redesign my portfolio, you can check that video out here. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.